Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about yet another unusual galaxy we just discovered only a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video. And you're actually looking at the picture of that galaxy. Although, as you can probably see, it's kind of difficult to see anything on the picture. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So what you're looking at is actually the only galaxy, or technically one of two possible galaxies in the same region, we've discovered as of 2019 that seems to have like no dark matter whatsoever. You might be familiar with what dark matter is already, and if you're not, maybe check out some of the previous videos I've made. And you might uh, be also familiar with how a typical galaxy, like for example, our own Milky Way that you see right here, um, maintains its shape and its structure because of the dark matter. But if you're not, well, I guess a super, super quick explanation I can give you is that if it wasn't for dark matter, all of the stars that we have here uh, would most likely fly apart and not really form into a cohesive galaxy because they're all moving really, really, really fast, faster than they should. And something is keeping them together. And that's something we refer to as dark matter. But it just so happens that unlike in the Milky Way or even other nearby galaxies, like for example, let's actually take a look at some dwarf galaxies nearby. There is actually a Carina dwarf galaxy right here, very, very close to the Milky Way. Um, even galaxies like this uh, will usually have dark matter inside. And as a matter of fact, um, some of the dwarf galaxies we've discovered have the most dark matter uh, ratio wise um, in the universe. In other words, sometimes there is so much dark matter in these galaxies that uh, they're basically all dark matter with only a few stars here. But then we discovered this unusual blob that you see that's basically the opposite. Now, we predicted that these galaxies exist. We actually thought that uh, they were possible, but we never really saw them in real life until, well, really recently. Now, um, let me actually show you where this is located and also what it's called. Uh, this galaxy is known as NGC 1052-DF2. DF stands for Dragonfly, which was actually the um, telescope that was used to detect uh, this particular galaxy. But um, unfortunately, we don't really have the uh, simulation of this in Space Engine, but we have the parent galaxy. That's what the parent galaxy looks like. So this is a typical elliptical galaxy. Uh, and around this galaxy, there are actually several neighboring galaxies that you can see right here. So there is the NGC 1052, and there is that 1052-DF2 uh, we've discovered. Uh, there's actually another galaxy nearby um, that I'm not entirely sure where it is on this image, but um, it's referred to as DF4 that also doesn't have much dark matter in it. But this one specifically has basically none. It's as of today, considered to be um, almost completely devoid of any dark matter. It's just regular stars and regular matter. Now, um, there's a very clever way that we use to actually discover this, but um, in essence, one of the ways to see if there's any dark matter is to measure the velocity of stars. But because this is really kind of far away, actually, um, we have to measure the velocity of uh, globular clusters. In other words, if I were to look in our own Milky Way and try to find some kind of a globular cluster here, uh, usually these are the brightest objects. I think there's one actually right here, maybe. Is that, is that one? Um, oh, there's one. So if I were to look at this globular cluster that I'm approaching toward, um, and then uh, essentially use its uh, luminosity, its brightness to measure the velocity, um, I could then determine how much dark matter there is. And the way it works is, well, it's not uh, super difficult. So we make an assumption that um, at a certain distance from the center of the galaxy, a typical star or a typical global cluster would have um, a certain orbital velocity. If this orbital velocity is much higher than uh, what we predicted, it means that this galaxy has a lot more dark matter keeping things together. However, if that velocity is found to be much lower or actually basically, um, well, very close to the predicted value, it means that this galaxy has very little dark matter. Now, in the galaxy that you saw on the screen, the galaxy NGC 1052 uh, DF2, uh, the predicted velocity was about 8 kilometers per second uh, for a typical global cluster in the surroundings. 
And it just so happens that when we calculated the velocity, it was basically eight kilometers per second, suggesting that um, there was nothing really keeping stars together. There was no dark matter trying to maintain the shape of this galaxy. And on top of that, we also discovered that all of the globular clusters in, in that particular uh, galaxy were also much more uh, spread out. They were basically a lot uh, less dense. So even though a typical global cluster looks something like this in um, 1052 DF2, it would be two to maybe even three times bigger in terms of the actual size, but not in terms of the number of stars. So in other words, um, it basically showed us that as things were kind of a lot more farther apart, they were a lot more diffuse and uh, were very, very, very far away from each other. And that in essence suggests that, well, that galaxy probably has no dark matter at all, which is at some point may seem strange, but then when you really think about it, theoretically, we predicted this uh, many, many times. And I think one of the easiest way of simulating this is by taking a look at these galactic collisions right here in Universe Sandbox. So in this example right here, um, you might actually see this happening any second now as these two galaxies collide. And there you go, there's that collision and there's that piece. There is that piece that's slowly flying out. It might be a little bit difficult to see, but it's essentially right here. There's that piece that's actually going to become its own independent galaxy that's going to fly away and become a, a diffused dwarf galaxy. Uh, there's going to be a lot of these pieces that will probably gain independence and become their own pieces. There's actually another one right here. Kind of difficult to see because they're so diffuse and um, don't have much in terms of matter. And for the most part, uh, these diffuse galaxies actually do have quite a lot of stars in them, but because there is so much distance between them, it's very, very difficult to see anything. There's actually a billion stars here. Uh, obviously not as many as in our own galaxy, but still quite a lot. And it most likely also had, has a supermassive black hole in the middle. So for the most part, uh, these are actually really interesting, very unusual, but uh, very unique galaxies uh, that we need to study a little bit more because we might even discover something that we didn't really know about dark matter. And uh, this particular galaxy, NGC 1052, uh, the, the actual parent galaxy is also very interesting. It has a tremendously massive um, supermassive black hole in the middle that's about 40 times more massive than the one in the middle of our own galaxy, even though this is actually not as big as the Milky Way. Uh, at the same time, uh, it has a tremendously powerful magnetic field, probably one of the most powerful we've detected so far. So there's a lot of mysteries in this particular region, and now we've discovered even more to study. And so in essence, this is a very rare ultra, as a matter of fact, uh, type of a ultra diffuse galaxy with no dark matter. We only discovered a few ultra diffuse galaxies, like four or five of them. And this one also happens to have no dark matter whatsoever. Although ironically, some of the other ultra diffuse galaxies are almost the opposite. They have so much dark matter um, and very, very, very few actual stars. And uh, the other thing we know about this galaxy is that it's actually pretty old. It's about 9 billion years old. And it's been like that for those 9 billion years. But other than that, that's all we know about uh, uh, this particular unusual ultra diffuse galaxy with no dark matter. And hopefully in the next few years, we'll discover something else. For now, though, that's all I wanted to show you. Thank you so much for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't and maybe even support this channel on Patreon because it does help me a lot. And thank you so much to all of you that have supported me for months and years. I really, really appreciate it. Anyway, space out and as always, bye bye.